those uh, predictions that I think goes uh, very, you know, both ways. Uh, I, I'm not going to say too much yet until we get a good look at them. Mm. But um, I know I did vote for Hero myself. I feel like, um, I don't know. It, it was like on that knife's edge, you know. It's like such a hard prediction to make between yeah. Rogue and Hero. Yeah. But again, I, I don't know. It, it really could go either way. I, I'm still not that sure. Mm. Yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see. It's going to be a merry-go-round, which is definitely one of the reasons why I kind of... um. It, it favored me more to mm. kind of vote for Rogue because obviously Merry Go Round going to be a little bit harder for Protoss. Harder to get a third base, very, very open map. Definitely gives Zerg the advantage to kind of do timings on that third base, cancel it, and put them even further ahead in economy. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what Hero is cooking up on this map because maybe he's going to go for a two base style, maybe some sort of all in. And yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just going to be up to how the game plays out. I was just kind of ba banking on, you know, Hero, his style. I just really like him as a player. Uh, may have been a bit of a bias pick. Um, I feel like Rogue is definitely a very good player. But, I mean, looking at this, uh, still going both ways. I feel like Hero, if you guys look at this, not the favorite player, at least in predictions. Mm. Four of those votes do go to Rogue. Yeah, how about that? How about that, Moonglade? How about that, Beldez? <laughs> you know what? I thought I was, I'd was i be the only special player, uh, only special person. You to thought you were going to be special like that Journey versus Marine King vote, man. Yeah, one can any dream. Oh, well. Not today. Oh, well. Not today. Yeah, I mean, I, I went through all the statistics of recent times, and both players are just playing so well. Like, it's, it's yeah. really that hard to choose from. I don't know. I, I really just want to get into the game, you know? I, I, I really want to stop speculating. I want to just jump into it, because I also feel like one of the reasons why I would favor Hero, just in general, because I do make a lot of these predictions. Like, I don't really go back and look at stats and stuff. I, I do know that both these players are playing extremely well, so I'm kind of just thinking in my head, okay, which player do I just have more confidence in to mm. come out time and time again? I feel like there have been times in the past where I've like voted on Rogue or I thought he was going to win and he just like kind of fell apart. I feel like mm. in some instances he has been a little bit inconsistent, whereas Hero's kind of been a, a bit more consistent in my mind. Yeah, that is true. And I don't know. I feel like the Protoss definitely does have a lot of tools to kind of mess with the Zerg. And if Hero can get into his head a bit earlier on, could definitely do some decent damage to Rogue. Mm. Hero is very good at just playing a very straight-up game, though. Like, when I think of Hero, I just think of like a really powerful Protoss that's Good at playing, going to mid game safely, and just destroying someone. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I have heard Artosis, I believe, uh, vote him as like top three or five Protosses in the world. Like, oh, I definitely vote a, him right a, up there, you man. Know, that's yes. that's top not three. just like an empty thought. You know, this guy has so many results. He's taken out so many Zergs, so many Protosses and Terrans. This guy is all over the place. Whereas Rogue, you know, he is definitely a very good Zerg, but he's only nowadays like really starting to like get it ton of wins. He was playing very well in the past as well. Not taking anything away from that, but um, I feel like Hero has just been like on a roll for a longer period of time, if that makes any sense. Well, he essentially carried his team last year as well, right? Like, he, he's been MVP of Pro League many, many times, like, overall essentially, and yeah, he's just one of the most consistent protosses we have. And once again, we have him today, up against quite a titan of an opponent. Yeah. Definitely uh, going to be an amazing match. I'm really looking forward to this one, man. You mentioned it when we were getting a look at the matchups. We just had a look at the Smiling Assassin, but over here is Rogue. He's 10 and 10 versus Protoss's overall. He's played a ton of Protoss. I feel a lot of that comes in from last season, which was kind of the era of Protoss oh, out yeah. here in Korea. Oh, yeah. A lot of Protoss last season. And like we mentioned before, this guy's been playing very, very well recently. He is 2-0 and in Pro League. Defeating Doing Classic and Flash. Yeah, those are two big names, man. Two huge wins. Yep. Can't take anything away from this guy. He has got that upwards red arrow for a reason. People are really touting this guy as one of the bigger Zergs out here to start uh, taking some championships and just doing really, really well. We're, we're all waiting for that to happen. I'll tell you that much, Valdez. Yeah, he me too. He definitely has the potential to do so. Well, guys, we've waited long enough. It's going to be Hero for CJ Antis versus Rogue of Jin Air Green Wings. Let's jump right into game number one, or rather game number two, on Merry-Go-Round. Up here in the top left in the red, the Protoss player for CJ Entis, it is Hero. And in the top right for 
For Jin Air Green Wings, it is Greg. For Green Wings Air. For Green Wings Jin Air Green. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's see what these guys have planned on this map, Veldez. This is going to be a tough one for Protoss unless they have some kind of two base timing in, uh, in mind. And we are seeing a probe. Mm -hmm. I it was going to go down the ramp. Yeah, I'm deciding to actually make a wall at the top of the ramp, it seems, this time. Old school, man. Old school gateway sort of block oh, man, at yeah. the top of the ramp. Not a bad choice. Hope he doesn't put that zealot a little bit too far to the left when he plays his whole position or all of those speedling all-ins we used to see back in the beginning of Wings of Liberty. <laughs> Could kill him. They're coming back, man. <laughs> Rogue is leading the way. We'll have to see. Well, when you have this kind of uh, build order, obviously hatch first would be the way to take an advantage economically. But I don't think we're going to be seeing that. We could see maybe one hatch first into pool, but I don't know if we'll see double hatch into pool. If it we even see that at all, Valdez. Yeah. <laughs> Gateway do does come down. The probe... Out on the map to scout. Looking for those cheeky uh, proxies by the looks of things just for a second there. And it's going to be that hatch first, so very nicely done. And really interesting scouting pattern out of Hero. He actually checks for the Orlord from the bottom position, and he doesn't see it, so he just immediately goes to the top right. Very well thought out for the map. Mm -hmm. Knows his timings and stuff. And we, are, we have a drone looking for any sort of uh, cannon play. Little does he know that there's a gateway on the top of the ramp. And he should be entirely fine, though he is going to bring those drones down to the natural just to be safe. You never want to lose to a cannon. Yeah, already four drones being pulled. Just a safety measure, as you were men uh, mentioning. And the probe's not even going to put down a pylon. And eventually Rogue will realize that he's not doing much. Yeah, just playing it safe for now. Still, uh, definitely going to give that advantage to Rogue. Going for that hatch first, and he knows now. It was all a lie all along. Probe going to come in and see no gas. That's what he wants to see right now. See exactly uh, if he has to worry about speedlings out on the map soon or not. Sees only the pool and is just going to go out of the base now. Going to go out of the base, Valdez. You got to come back into the base, Valdez. Oh, it's man. okay there. <laughs> and two queens on the way, yeah. It's all going to remain gases for now. Let's see how long or when he's going to get his gases. And if, what time is he going to get that third hatchery? It's all going to come down to this. And obviously that probe wants to know exactly what's going on so Hero can uh, figure out what he needs to do, how aggressive he is going to be. Obviously, if he's going to see an early third hatchery without any gases on the map, he can chrono boost out a stalker or two and do a lot of damage because look how exposed this third base is. It's in the middle of the map. And there it goes down. Yeah. Hero would have seen that for sure, no doubt about that. A base you were saying for the Protoss, it is at times hard to hold, but again, it's pretty hard for the Zerg as well if you don't have that speedling upgrade, and it's hard to get that creep as well connected it, to that third base. It can definitely get uh, uh, pretty ugly in the early game. We are seeing a Stalker on the way. <laughs> <laughs> nice little move there. Mothership Core out in due time. Get rid of this Zergling. And, yeah. Still no gases for Rogue just yet. Maybe waiting for a six minute, perhaps. Ooh. Wow, actually, a little bit of harassment there. Having to pull oh. all the probes, losing two. Gets that second weakened probe from earlier on. Nice cheeky harassment there. Yeah. That's just the annoying harassment that could get a player on tilt. Mm. And we are seeing a forge and a robo added. Leads me to believe that it won't be an all-in anytime soon, and we're going to see him go for a third base. But I guess we'll just have to keep an eye on how many gateways are added. If it's going to be two, then it should pretty much be an expansion. It's going to be more than that, then maybe not. Yeah. You're going to just have to continue looking at exactly what Hero throws down here. Just making two Stalkers for now. He's making a third Stalker, even. Hmm. You know, with this, if he does make a lot of Stalkers, he could kind of rush out plus two, try to go for some Blink play. Yeah, with Stalkers instead of Sentries, I, I definitely feel like it could be a lot more aggressive than I originally thought. Could even be... Would it be Immortal? Is it too late for Immortal? Well, it's going to be a war prison to start things off. Hard to kind of speculate exactly what Hero has planned, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it's pretty much all we're doing at this point. We're, like, trying to figure it out, but it's pretty hard, you know. We're just still going to have to wait a bit. And two more gates come down at the front. Hmm. See if he adds any more. Well, hmm. Okay. Perhaps it's going to be a stalker war prism. 
And behind this, he will go for something else. I feel like he's going to put these four stalkers in the warp prism. Harass, while he makes a transition, it's just about what he's going to transition into. We were talking about cheeky harass a bit before. This is pretty cheeky, man. Well, I like cancel. <laughs> we don't, oh, we don't see this too he's often. going to scout everything. Oh, man, this is actually so huge. And we did see a huge swell of Zerglings on the map as well. Can definitely shut down these uh, these Stalker drops if he sees them in time. He's got to be careful of the ramp especially, and he is. Yep. He's going to see it now, and immediately brings those Zerglings into the main. But Ooh. he fakes it. He's going to try to drop here at the third. Again, speed is not yet done. He's trying to focus down that queen. He can easily micro these Stalkers and just pick them up once again. But after getting that queen, doesn't seem like he wants to do too much. He just okay. drop it over here. All right, so it's plus two blink stalker. And he's trying to harass me. He can't lose him. He's actually, all these stalkers are really getting softened up. And we did see the Roach Warren added. And yep. I feel like, I feel like uh, Roach should have an idea of exactly what Hero has planned. Yeah, I mean, going this far out onto the creep, just trying to clean up all those tumors, makes it pretty obvious that he wants to not allow Ro to connect that creep so that it's going to be a bit weaker against an aggressive attack. Mm -hmm. And immediately, we do have a Hydralis Den on the way coming out of Ro. He's going to get them out very soon. We do see five gateways being added, plus, plus two, a third of the way through. So Ro wants to get that Groove Spines and wants to start Hydro Production ASAP. He has certainly droned enough. He has... Essentially, oh, he has fully saturated every single base, including the gases, which is going to be perfect for Hydra production. He just needs it out in time. Well, man, he's already getting eight Hydras out here. He's also starting the plus one to his ranged attacks. And he's done pretty well at holding off this harass. I mean, Hero did a nice job of uh, killing the creep tumors and delaying that creep connection a bit with that third base. Mm. But uh, besides that, he got that queen, and now he's not paying attention, so all these Stalkers oh, wow. outside of one are going to go down. Really nice. And we are seeing eight more Hydras on the way. This is actually really perfect preparation from Rogue. I feel like he is in a prime position to defend against this. He knows it's coming. That Overseer saw everything. Yeah, man. I mean, he's got so many Hydras on the map. He's also got the Speedlings in the front to tank. So annoying to deal with when you just have a lot of Blink Stalkers. We do have a nice wall set up at the front, so no kind of runbys are going to work here. Here, here we go we with go. the attack. Yep, here we go. War Prism has the sentries in it. There's way too many Hydras. He's going to have to pull back. And Rogue just has to hold on. Just has to take good fights. Obviously, it's going to be a big problem when the sentries come out and the force fields go down. That's uh, definitely Hero's best chance to win a fight and get ahead in, a, uh, in composition in army. And here we go. Once again, some force fields coming down. Just backing off, being very patient with this. Wants to pick oh. off a lot of the speedlings. But this is just so much Zerg. It is way the lanes too much. are coming from the left side as well. Way too much. And every sentry is getting picked off, which is the, the one sort of trump card that Hero had, man. Oh, man. This is this is pretty brutal right now for Hero. This is one way into this fight against Hydras. They, you have force fields, but now things get a little ugly. Great composition. Uh, sorry, great concave. Not composition. Yeah. <laughs> Bad composition. Not the best composition, actually. He's just, he's just trying to pummel this in, man. He's yep. making only stalkers. This has, like, no contingency plan. There's no, you know, third base coming his way. But Rogue, I mean, like you said before, he's just sticking on 65 drones. He's got all the economy he wants. Mm -hmm. And Hero's just not going to back down. He wants to make that plus two work for him. Well, from here, he is down 60 supply. And it's only going to get higher and higher. He really is on a time limit. But... I, I don't think I don't think there's anything left. You think he, he either takes perfect sort of engagement, the perfect link, whittles down this army somehow, or goes into Colossi at some point. But I don't think he has the time to do that. Yeah, I mean, we already got a spire on the way. It's going to be so annoying to deal with. And Hero, I don't know what to say, man. He's going for a drop right now, but this is going to be totally caught oh, out. Oh, completely caught out. And he is just suffocating. Yeah, he can't do anything. He takes a big sigh, actually, in the booth. Yeah, he knows he's, he's in a really awkward position. He's adding a Robo, in it, a Robo B now. So he, he can go into to Colossi, but he's got to survive until then, which is the next step. And we're already seeing a, a counterattack from Rook, which I think is very daring, considering every Stalker is still outside the main. He's actually just going to come from behind, is what it looks like. Yeah. All those Stalkers try to blink away, but they run into a bunch of Lings. Immediately, oh. Recall comes down. Very nice. But Rogue is maxed out right now. <laughs> he's maxed out. He's gonna have to push the issue. There is no, uh, there is no force field to really slow this down. But 
still going to be a pretty hard fight for Rook to take up a ramp against this many Stalkers. Yeah, we already got Col also got Colossi in the way, but Rogue's going to try to take it. A, a huge concave coming in here for Hero. He does have that plus two as well. Really nice time warp coming in here, but that is a lot of Hydras. That is a lot. That's way too much to kind of blink by, and we're seeing every Stalker go down, and so many Roaches at the back as well, and there's no hope for Hero. Oh my god. What really? did we just see? This is devastation, man. We saw a beatdown, <laughs> man. This, this is, is seeing my prediction get flushed down the toilet <laughs> right now, man. I'm so sorry, Valdez, <laughs> man. I don't know what to say, dude. Rogue is just on another level today. Yeah. It's really, really nice game played so far. And he's just going to close the door on this one, man. Colossus yep. does come out. Well, a Colossi with no range. Mm. Can only do so much. Yeah. Does get taken out. Hero just trying to gather his thoughts right now before going into this loss. And GG is called. Green Greenwings on the back of Rogue to tie it up here. 1-1. One, one. We're getting ready for another uh, fantastic match, Valdez. We're going to go all the way again, I think, man. I would not be surprised at all. These two teams are so evenly matched that having an ace match is only a guarantee. It's, it's almost a guarantee at this point. It really is. I mean, next up, we have Sky High versus Cure, which is also going to be an absolutely insane match on Catalina. I'm very, very excited for that. And man, these teams, I, I definitely think they're going the distance. Here with a bit of a devastating loss. Yeah, man. Rogue just read this guy like a book. He knew it was coming. I feel like Hero almost made it too obvious as well. He's like, I'm going to harass with my stalkers and very purposely and meticulously clear up your creep. And I hope you don't notice that I have a follow-up attack coming. Yeah, well, I mean, on Merry Go Round, it's always going to be a given as well. Unless he's going for, like, a pretty risky third base, he's going to go for some kind of two-base timing attack. So uh, it was just really about him figuring out what it was going to be. And he did so perfectly. A, a fantastic scout with the Overseer to kind of solidify his his idea of what hero was going to go. And then just mass Hydra, mass the perfect composition to crush it and just completely beat it down and completely be in position for it. Hero right now being talked to by a lot of his team. Actually, the assistant coach looks like he's going at it with him. Oh man, they are not happy with this guy. I mean, they can't be too mad at him. Well, like man. you were saying, I mean, there are a lot of reasons for Protoss to not be happy uh, on that map and in that situation. But. Yeah, well, I mean, when you're on merry go uh, what can you really expect from a, from a Protoss against a Zerg playing this well? Yep. He was very, very on top of his game so, uh, at the moment. Rogue looked great, man. Um, but I think we're about to jump into a two-minute break as we do wait, as is the way of Pro League after the second game of the day. So, guys, stay tuned. We will be right back with our third matchup. Hi, this is Sophie.